Unlimited Church. Oh my gosh, it is such an honor to be with you. I wish I could be with you in person, but it is what it is. And, and it's just an honor to come and bring the word. If we've never met before, my name's Josh and, and uh, I love your church. I love your leaders and, and my gosh, Pastor Sean and Linda, aren't they just the absolute best? And, and to be asked to come and bring the word today and to speak to your young adults tonight is, is a great privilege. And, and I believe I've got a word in my spirit for you. And, and I just want to say for a moment before we get into this, I'm so sorry about the lockdown that you're in and that it's just gone for a while and, and that you've heard as of Friday, there's another four weeks and, and this is tough, but you're going to get through this. We're going to walk through it and the best days are ahead in Jesus' name. In South Australia, we've had it pretty good, although I had a little lockdown myself and it can't, doesn't really compare to yours. But last November, after we went through 2020, thinking that was over, whatever, and um, we went on a quick holiday with my family to Port Douglas. And I got up to Port Douglas and we were borrowing a friend's house up there. And we got there and just thought we'd have a relaxing afternoon and the next day we'd take the boys to see some crocodiles, as you do in far north Queensland. And as I'm unpacking the bags, there's a guy that comes from across the little roadway and said, hey, where are you from? And I said, I'm from South Australia. And he said, get back inside. I said, excuse me? He goes, we don't want what you've got here. I said, what have I got here? And he held his hose up and said, go inside. Like he was going to shoot me with a gun. I'm like, cool your jets, cowboy. But he, I went inside and I'm wondering what's happening. And it turns out that South Australia had a little COVID outbreak that all turned out to be nothing. Pizzagate, if you know anything about it. Well, the next few days, I found out that I couldn't leave the house I was in. So my time in holidays, as soon as I got to Queensland, turned out that there's a guy with a hose protecting the property, not allowing me to leave. We are locked in a stranger's house that has no Wi-Fi. So I had to talk to my children. There was Nescafe coffee. I mean, if you like Nescafe, we're going to pray for you after the service. Uh, anniversary was the next day, but there was no food in the house. So all we had was cheese and crackers together to celebrate. The next day, our plan was to take our boys to a crocodile farm. And instead, we took them for a COVID test, a little <laughs> up the nose. Now, I know that doesn't compare to what you're walking through, but that's my lockdown experience. But too many people do live in lockdown. So today, I want to talk to you about freedom. You know, the message of Jesus is one of freedom. Free from sickness, free from sin, free from captivity, free from shame. The story of Jesus is not just one of him going into a cave, but it's a message of him getting out of it too. And that's what I'm preaching you about today, getting out of your cave. Jesus' goal was freedom. At his first message, he chose to read from Isaiah. When he first opened up and preached, he spoke from Isaiah. We read about in Luke chapter 4, verse 17, 21 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he read, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This message was about from the beginning, he is here to see freedom come. In John chapter 8, he says, If you abide in my word and you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He goes on just a little bit later. He says, truly, truly, like he's trying to convince us, like I'm talking to my kids sometimes, like seriously, seriously. He's saying, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, come on, you are free indeed. Why do we need to know truth? Why free indeed? The Bible says that we're slaves to sin. All of us, we can't help but going back to the limitation and restriction, not the freedom that God has for our life. So we often settle for less. Christians too, we all do this. You know, what does freedom look like? God's plan for your freedom, for freedom in your life is that you would have joy unspeakable. Do you live with joy unspeakable? Or is there a sadness that sometimes covers you? Freedom looks like laughter. But some of us live with real seriousness. You know, when you've lost your passion, you become intense. His plan wasn't that you live intense. His plan was that you live with passion. That comes from joy. You know what freedom looks like? It looks like worship. But sometimes we get dry. Freedom looks like generosity. But sometimes we live tight. Freedom looks like living with a yes. But sometimes we live so full. 
I believe that what happens when we live in this world, and especially when you've been in lockdowns and limitations and restrictions, is you get conditioned to captivity. I mean, we're saved, but the truth is we're on the journey to living free. Because we're free from condemnation and sin doesn't mean that we fully live free each and every day. And Galatians 5 talks about this in verse 1. It says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. What happens to all of us is we have high moments with God, but we retreat back to what we know, living in slavery and limitation. I mean, this happened with Abraham, so it can happen to us. He lived in miracle after miracle, but he retreated back to his tent. I mean, Elijah conquers the prophets of Baal, sends fire from heaven, calls on rain, runs faster than a chariot but then he runs into his cave. I mean, Samson, Samson's doing all these wonders for God. There's a point where he conquers an army with a jawbone of a donkey. He literally lifts out of the ground the city gates. At one point, he captures 300 foxes and sets fire to their tails. 300 foxes. How do you do that? I've only ever captured 32, but he captures 300 foxes, but then he goes and hides in his cave. I mean, Peter sees the resurrected Jesus and he goes back to his boat. We all run into our cave. We all have a cave we run into, the place where we feel safe, the place where we protect ourselves, the place where we go and hide and we limit and restrict ourselves. And today I want to call you out of your cave. If this weird season, this last few years has robbed you of your joy and your laughter and your generosity and your passion and your faith today in Jesus' name, I want to call you out of your cave to the freedom that God's called you to be in. I mean, for Abraham, it's real. The barrenness that him and his wife experienced sent him into his cave. For Elijah, it was mental pressure. He battled with mental health that it pushed him to wrong beliefs. And for some of us, that's real. And we've got to acknowledge that today, that there's strongholds we have to come against. For Samson, his failings pushed him to hide in his cave. And we get it wrong, that's real. Peter, for Peter, it was disappointment. He couldn't handle any more disappointment, so he went back to his past. Sometimes there are real things barrenness and waiting and the mental pressure of what we're walking through and our failings and disappointment, they do push us back into our cave, into that place we were never meant to be. I mean, look at Elijah. Why did Elijah run? One moment he's on the mountaintop, but the next moment he's in the desert and he goes and hides in a cave. Why did Elijah run? Surely he's a man after God's heart. He was a prophet. He was a deliverer. But if it can happen to Elijah, maybe it can happen to you too. So in grace, why did Elijah run? Well, Elijah was physically and emotionally and spiritually exhausted. We can sometimes become emotionally and physically and spiritually exhausted. There's no condemnation for being weary. The Bible says, do not grow weary, but it never says you won't get weary. Jesus got weary. He just didn't grow there. He didn't stay there. He didn't retreat there. Jesus got weary in the desert and the angels came to help him. Jesus got weary in John chapter 4 and he sat by a well. Elijah got weary. Elijah was alone. In this season, so many people are alone, so we run into our caves. Elijah felt pretty sorry for himself. And fair enough. Elijah was was discouraged. After all of his efforts, no one was there to encourage him. And after his best efforts, all he heard was the voice of Jezebel who discouraged And you know what? Elijah listened to his feelings. The Bible says to guard our heart and mind against our feelings. Feelings are a bad indicator of how God sees us in our future, but feelings are real. Elijah was winning when all of this happened. He was doing so well, but he ran and hid in a cave. And maybe for a season you've been doing well, but lately you haven't felt like you once did. Maybe you haven't been able to push in or get around others and your spirit's dry and your faith's dropped and you feel alone, you feel depressed, you feel like you're struggling. And we all have caves that we run to that aren't healthy. And maybe for sure, it's not a physical cave, like very little of us, many, not many of us have a physical cave, but it's an emotional cave. Caves of depression, caves of isolation. When we get hurt and disappointed, we retreat and we hide in a cave. There's caves of imbalance. There's caves of hiding. There's caves of consuming. There's caves of busyness. There's caves of isolation. 
And a cave's not where you're meant to live, not when Jesus set you free. There's a few real dangers about a cave. Now, I'm not a cave expert, but what I do know about caves is caves are dark. Sometimes we get to a place where we lose our vision. When you go into your cave, there's very little vision. You can't see your future if you stay in your cave. It's there that when you're in a cave and you can't see, to make your way around, you're led by your feelings. You're not called to be led by your feelings. You're meant to be led by the Word of God. It's in a cave where you're alone and you're lonely and there's no connection. One thing I know about a cave is there's no fresh air, no wind, no spirit. It's where we go into our cave that we may feel safe, but it doesn't mean we're healthy. And Jesus came to call you out of your cave so that you could walk in all that he has for your life. Because it may be a place you've retreated to, and it may be a place you're hiding in, it may be a place where you feel safe, but that cave may hurt you. In Joshua chapter 10, it tells the story how Joshua defeated five armies. But there were five kings of these five armies. And these five kings went and hid in a cave. And when Joshua heard that these kings were hiding in a cave, you know what he did? He got a large stone and he rolled it in front of the cave. Church, you have to be careful. Catch this today. Because the hiding place has now been transformed into a prison. If you retreat and you hide and you isolate and you protect yourself for long enough, the cave that you hide in eventually becomes your prison. Don't allow the place of hiding to become a prison for your life. So after a while, Joshua moves a stone and he calls these kings out. And you know what he does? He hangs those five kings and then he takes their bodies and he throws it into the same cave. Notice that if you don't come out of your cave, if you don't come out of that place of past hurt, it will become a prison. And if you stay there long enough in that prison, it will become a grave. If you don't let go of what's happened in your past, that cave becomes a prison and that prison becomes a grave. If you stay alone for too long that cave becomes a prison and that prison becomes a grave unforgiveness pushes you into a cave and that cave becomes a prison to your future and eventually becomes a grave living start safe living off the things of the world becomes a place we retreat to but it becomes a place that holds you captive and it kills off your faith hurt and living in shame becomes a grave to God's purposes and God's plans and the dream he has for your life. I want to declare over you today, God has more. So he calls Abraham out to the edge of his tent and he shows him the stars because you've got to get out to see the promise that God has for your life. For Elijah, there was a destiny that God wanted to whisper to him and he came in the cool of the night, but he had to get to the edge of his cave if he wanted to hear it. For Samson, there was greater purpose for his life, but God's people had to get Samson out if he was to walk into supernatural power. For Peter, Jesus come, comes and meets him on the beach because he wants to forgive him, but he wants to give him new mission. You might be here and you might be struggling. You might be sick. You might be hurt. You might feel chained up. And so was Paul. But literally there in that prison, he had to praise his way out. He had to declare his way out because God's plan was that he would live free. I want to tell you today, God's plan is that you would live free. You would live in abundance. You would live in joy. You would live in praise. You would live in hope. But it's time to get yourself out of a cave. If you've limited, if you've retreated, if you've isolated, if you've restricted, I want to declare you today spiritually, emotionally, God wants to get you out of your cave. So as I come to a close, what did Elijah do? Number one, Elijah had to change position. Church, God can only heal what you reveal. Sometimes we want to keep our hurts and our disappointments to ourselves, But can you trust God with them? See, Elijah had to walk out of the cave to hear the whisper of God. God can only show you your next when you're willing to step out. For Jesus, there were times where he had to be led to solitude so he could see. Moses had to be led to the top of a mountain so he could see. Joshua had to go to the edge of camp so he could see. Abraham had to go to the edge of the tent so he could see. And Elijah had to get to the edge of his cave so he could hear. This is why the word is a lamp to my feet 
and a light to my path. If you've been in your cave, it's time to get into the promises, the potential, what the Word says He has for you, and let it lead you out of your cave. What did Elijah have to do? Number one, he had to change position. And number two, he had to listen to the small, sweet voice of the Holy Spirit. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 13 says, When Elijah heard it, the voice of God, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And get this, then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? I love that God didn't tell him off. God didn't say, I'm disappointed with you. God just wanted him to live free. And in the kindness and grace of God, he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I feel God may be speaking to some of us today, saying, hey, what are you doing here, son? What are you doing here, daughter? What are you doing here, friend? Come on, walk with me, speak with me, be with me, worship me. I want to lead you to a place of healing, of restoration and of freedom. One more cave. In John chapter 11, and Lazarus is found and he is bound and he's been dead three days and he's been put in a cave. And it's there they rolled the stone in front of the grave. But when Jesus comes to that grave, what does Jesus say? He says, come out. I declare for you today that even though there may be things that's died in you in these last few years, there may be faith that you've given up on, disappointment that's made you feel like you stinketh. I want to tell you today that when Jesus stands before you, he doesn't just see your circumstance, but I believe he wants to roll away the stone and he's calling you out today. He's saying, come out today. Wherever you are, roll the stone away. Take the death clothes off. I'm not about to die. The cave, the enemies put me in will not be my prison and will not be my grave. You don't have to be disappointed any longer. You don't have to be stuck here any longer. It's time to trust again. It's time to lead again. It's time to worship again. It's time to run again. It's time to give again. It's time to praise again. It's time to go again. It's time to be free again. Come out. Come on, church. I'm declaring to you in Jesus' name. It's time to come out. It's time to rise up. It's time to believe that there are good days ahead. He is the resurrection and the life. That cave you've been in, that place you've been in, it cannot hold you. Why? Because there is an empty cave that we celebrate every Easter and every day and every moment in Jesus Christ, where an angel came and said to Mary, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He's no longer here. Today you can be like him because Jesus came out of that grave, because Jesus took Lazarus out out of his cave because he called Elijah out of his cave. I believe he can set you free from your cave. He can take off that heaviness and replace that heaviness for a garment of praise. He can take away your mourning and he can give you joy. He can remove that heaviness and he can set you free today. You can come out, you can come up and you can live again in Jesus name. Come on, Life Unlimited, wherever you are in your own home gathering, why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you lift your hands out in front of you? I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your goodness and I thank you for your faithfulness. And I thank you that you came to set us free, that we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. That the one that the sun sets free is free indeed. So I thank you for the truth of your grace. I thank you for the truth of your love. I thank you that the truth is found in Jesus Christ who gives us a future and a hope. So in Jesus' name, I call out every person that's retreated, that's restricted, that's limited, that's hurt, that's frustrated, that's disappointed. I declare life over them in Jesus' name. I declare wholeness and hope and joy over them in Jesus' name. I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit that equips them for great days ahead in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for those that have held back, those that have pulled back, those that have pushed back. I pray that you would pull them out today into freedom and life 
life in Jesus' name. I thank you for your word that is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. I thank you for the spirit of God that is our helper and our friend. I pray that this would be a day and this would be a white week where hope would be restored, where joy would return, where our head would be lifted and faith would rise. Because I declare over this church and I declare over every person in Jesus' name that there are good days ahead. So we call them out, come out, stand up and live again in Jesus' mighty name. For Jesus' glory we all prayed. Amen. Amen. Church, one more thing. If you don't know Jesus, He is calling you to freedom. He gave His life and He died, but He rose again and left that cave, left that grave, so that nothing that comes against you in this life could have power over you. If He could defeat death itself, He gives you the ability to walk through whatever challenge and circumstance and cave you find yourself in. Today, I believe the most important thing you could hear is that you are loved. He forgives you. He has good for you. He has grace for you. And He wants to lead you and go with you every day of your life from this moment forward. 